Yeah, hi, this is Elisha. I welcome you to my channel. In our video today, we're going to look at definite integrals. I hope you had seen the other video on indefinite integrals. So what then is definite integrals? Okay, so an indefinite integral is an integral without limits, while a definite integral is an integral that has both lower and upper limits of integration. So when you check out the integral sign here, we have the one which is at the bottom, that one is called the lower limit, and a three on top is actually the upper limit. So those are the ones we call limits. This one is the function which is being integrated. So let's see how we can integrate functions like these, one, like these ones. So what you need to know is a definite integral is simply a constant. It's a number that you are, you are going to have by the end of the day after integrating a given function. So we start with the first one. So we are integrating that one. That is 3x raised to the power 2 oops, minus 2x with respect to x. So with integration, you have to add 1 to the power. Then what you do on top is what you do at the bottom. You're going to add the 2 plus 1. Equally here, there's a 1, though it hasn't been shown. So we are adding a 1 to 1. Then at the bottom, we add 1 to 1 as well. So now, since we've already done the integration, all you have to do is to write the answer. I forgot to write a 1 here. So th this will be 3x. 2 plus 1 gives us a 3. Over 2 plus 1, that's a 3. Then minus... 2x raised to the power 2 over 2. Okay? So now since this one is a definite integral that we are going to find, then uh, you have to bring in the, the limits. I even forgot to write the limits there. Uh, so we write the limits here. Okay, so what you do is, let's execute this. Let's simplify everything. 3 can be divided into a 3 on top. We're going to have a 1, 1 into 1, 1. 1 times x, that will be, let me write the answer on top here. That will be x raised to the power 3 minus these 2 and that 2 will go as well. We're going to have x raised to the power 2 with the limits, 3 and the 1. So now for you to resolve this to the end, what you are supposed to do is, you say, for you to determine now the definite integral, the integral, what you do is uh, you subtract the lower limit from the upper limit. So we are going to substitute this 3, which is the upper limit, into this into this function that we have then we will sub we will, we will substitute this one where x is and subtract whatever we're going to have i see it's pretty hard for you to envision that let me walk you through this so now the upper limit will be fused into those uh, spots where x is so we're gonna have three raised to the power three minus 3 raised to the power 2. Then minus, we now plug in the lower limit. That will be 1 raised to the power 3 minus 1 squared. Let's resolve this to the end. So we now have 3, three cubed. That When you expand this one, you're going to have... 3 times 3 times uh, 3. Those are indices, which will give you 27. 27 minus 
This is 3 squared, which is 3 times 3, which is equal to 9. Then minus, what are we going to have here? That will be one, 1 cubed, that will still be a 1, minus 1 squared, which will still be a 1. So this one will be a 0. So we're going to just remain with this. So 27 minus 9, that gives us 18. That's the final answer. Let's do example two. Let's do example two. You're in control. You can you can actually pause the video and then play it later. If you want to copy whatever I've written so far. Okay, let's do example two. So I'm going to write that one. That is zero, one, x squared minus 2x minus 3, which is being integrated with respect to x. So here, what you need to know is there is x, which is raised to the power 0. So now when we are integrating, we simply add 1 to the power. And what you do on top is what you do at the bottom. Here, there is a 1, though it hasn't been indicated. You add the one, then divided by one plus one. Here you add the one, then you add one here. So now, what you do next is you simply write the answers. So this will be x raised to the power raised to the power 2 plus 1 that is a 3 over 3 minus this would be 2 x raised to the power 2 over 2 minus 3 x raised to the power 1 over 1 now since we're dealing with a definite integral you have to show the, the limits. The upper limit is one, the lower limit is a zero. So from here, we can simplify those that have to be simplified to their one, to their one. One there, one, one into three, that's a three. So we can rewrite this and have x raised to the power three over three minus x squared minus 3x. Oh, yeah. So now if we want to find now the, the final integral, we'll need to subtract the lower limit from the upper limit. So here we have a 0, and there we have a 1. So what do we do next? Let me create enough space here. I erase this. You can rewind the video so that you see what I, have, what I have erased if you hadn't copied that. So let's do this. We'll need to do this. That is x. Where there is x, we are going to substitute in the upper limit, which is 1. So that would be 1 raised to the power 3 over 3 minus 1 squared minus 3. I'm still substituting the upper limit here. And then we say minus. Now this time around, we're going to substitute into this function the lower limit, which is a 0. So 0 raised to the power 3 over 3 minus, where there is x, we substitute in a 0 raised to the power, th to the power 2 minus 3 times 0. Uh, so everything here when resolved, they'll give us a 0. So we can discard that. It's, it's just that there isn't enough space here for me to continue writing. So since we know it will be a 0, we we'll simply forget about this. We have a 0. When we add it or subtract it, a 0 from anything, any number, it will still be that number you're subtracting a 0 from. 
So let's focus on this. So what would be the final answer here? When you expand this one raised to the power three, that is one times one times one. So that would be a one over three minus one squared, that's one, because it's one times one. Don't make a mistake of adding this. We are <laughs> these are indices. So then three times one, that will be a three. Okay. We can now resolve this so that we have a single fraction or a single number. Okay. So now at this point we can find the lowest common multiple of these. Okay, so let's see, let's do this. Let me erase what's on top. Okay, beautiful. Here we go. So now we have one over three minus one minus three. So what you do is introduce a one there, introduce a one there. Then find the lowest common multiple, because these are fractions, so we need to find the lowest common multiple of these three denominators. So I can now erase everything at the bottom here. Okay. So now, we write a three here, which is the lowest common multiple of three, one, and one. 3 into 3, that gives us a 1, minus. Okay, so 1 into 3, that's 3 times 1 on top there, that's a 3, minus. 1 into 3, that's a 3, times 3, that's a 9. So now what do you get? 1 minus 3, that's negative 2, minus 9, over 3. This one will give us a uh, negative 11. Since the signs are the same, we add them over three. What then is the final? So we can leave it like this, or we can simplify. We're gonna have three into that. That's negative three, remainder two over three. Three times three, nine, 10, 11. And that's the final answer. So that's the integral of this function here. Okay, that's how we do it. Look forward to another video that I'll do on calculus where we'll teach you how to find the arbitrary constant. For the time being, let me give you something that you have to do on your own just to check if you have understood these things. Okay, beautiful. So you have those two questions. When you finish solving them, post the answers in the comment section. Thank you so much for watching. Stay blessed.